Welcome to another tutor short provided by the Educational Support Services Department of Lehigh Carbon Community College in Snexville, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Allentown. These videos review key learnings for the science courses provided here at LTRIC. And please remember that the Educational Support Services Department does provide walk-in tutoring five days a week. Let's take a look at thermal chemistry and the uh, conditions of system versus surroundings. This pertains to our Chem 111 course here at LTRIC, in particular on Chapter 6. And my attempt here in this video is just to get you comfortable with uh, how energy is represented when we're doing chemical reactions. Now to start with, um, the chapter begins with the first law of thermodynamics. And it talks about that the total energy of the universe is constant. Um, and you'll see they'll say in there that that's um, a way to think about that is there's no free lunch. Um, and to understand that, first you need to understand what a system and a surrounding uh, surroundings are. I like to think of it uh, as the way I'm showing here in this diagram. Uh, the system is uh, what you're trying to do, what you're looking at. And so in uh, our chemistry courses, we would always assume that the system is the reaction that's going on. We're mixing chemicals and there's some type of reaction going on. The surroundings is everything around that uh, chemical reaction. Uh, so if you think of this reaction occurring in a box, then uh, surrounding that box, uh, what I like to think of, it's the typical way you do some experiments, is you're doing it in a bath of water. And so in that system where the chemical reaction is going, if there's an exchange of energy, if that reaction gives off energy, then it goes to the surroundings. It goes into the water. So I would represent it like this. Energy is coming out and goes into the water, the water bath, and makes the water bath hot. Or if it's a um, the opposite, if the chemical reaction needs energy and it needs energy to proceed, then it's going to take energy away from the surroundings, and in this case, the water bath. So you have this idea of a system is what you're looking at, and the energy exchange, uh, if that system either needs energy or needs to get rid of energy, uh, that exchange of energy is going to be to the surroundings. And so once you know uh, or you think about that, uh, understand systems and surroundings, and then I see I had got to get rid of this. What the first law of thermodynamics is telling you is that the change in energy of a system plus the resultant change in energy of the surroundings added together have got to equal zero. Um, so um, the, there's always this exchange if there's a change in energy between systems and surroundings and they're always equal. Uh, if the system loses four joules of energy then the surrounding had to absorb those four joules. And so they're uh, equal in that way but opposite sign. Um, and that's when you, you'll you see in your textbook, it shows a delta uh, E of the system is equal to minus the delta E of the surroundings. Um, if the system gains energy, then the surroundings lost it. Um, if the system uh, lost energy, the uh, surroundings gained it. And uh, the other thing they introduced, the methodology, is you represent a change in energy as the final energy minus the initial energy of what you're doing, initial. So in a chemical reaction, when we look at that, the final will be the, the energy of the products here. Uh, minus the energy of your reactants, the ones you started with. And that's just the methodology, the nomenclature that is used um, in thermal chemistry. So it's um, products minus reactants um, as far as energy is concerned. So if we take a look, let's go back to 
exothermic system where up here on the right okay we know that if it's exothermic reaction you have if you use this as um, you'll see in the book it's called the internal energy of the um, of those chemicals so the internal energy for an exothermic you're starting with reactants that are high in energy and they go down to products that are low in energy so your your products are lower energy than the reactants what ends up is you release energy and so as I showed up here on the right you get a release of energy to the surroundings now when you do your change in energy here you do your change in energy of this of the let's call it uh, what you'll see then moved on to is change in energy of the of the reaction that's going on it's the uh, energy of the products so it's e of the products minus e of the reactants and because the reactants were at a higher energy than the products you end up with a negative result here uh, energy represented by joules you end up with a negative joules when you do that and an example of that would be if um, if you think uh, let's take a look it's more of a physical kind of reaction but if you had steam and the steam hits your skin and when it hits your skin it condenses to water okay that steam is going to release its energy because it's dropping down to a liquid state it releases that energy that's inside the steam and it burns your skin um, so that's a, an example of an exothermic um, reaction going on or an exothermic it's a change in state uh, from uh, gas to liquid now if we have an endothermic reaction then your products are let's put it up here your products are at a higher energy than the reactants now um, and I should represent this sorry you're starting with reactants and you're going up to products you had to gain energy so if you look on the right here it had to absorb energy from the surroundings in order to have an endothermic reaction to occur so it's absorbing energy which means the surrounding is losing that energy the the chemical reaction here the products are gaining the energy um, and in this case we could use something like ice uh, again just to do a simple uh, kind of relationship here if you have ice and you put it in water um, and it that ice melts you know back to liquid water you're doing um, that uh, your water bath your surrounding water it's going to get colder the ice will make that water colder because it's absorbing the energy to convert itself from a solid ice to liquid water and that's be the results of an endothermic reaction and then your your change in energy of reaction now for endothermic your e of products minus e of reactants now you have your products are higher energy minus the lower energy you're going to get a positive result in joules and so let me remove this and bring over what I wrote let's get up here too I bring this over I just summarized there um, what I just did with the the chart with the energy of the products and reactants in your textbook you'll um, you'll see this change in energy it can be represented uh, you'll see sometimes it's change in Q of reaction Q represents uh, is normally representative of heat um, so uh, if you remember from earlier uh, 
uh, work and, and chapter work or whatever, you'll have, you know, the Q of the system. Sometimes it's a capital Q. Um, is the um, moles uh, times the um, specific heat. Specific heat times the change in temperature. Uh, that's a common equation that you deal with uh, earlier in your chapters. But they like to represent the energy of heat as a Q. And so you'll see sometimes this change in energy represented as a delta Q of reaction. You also see it as a delta H of reaction. Um, delta H, H stands for enthalpy. And uh, you'll see that even in this chapter. Um, and then that's again, it's just a representation, it's just a term being used again for the energy um, of those chemicals, uh, energy of the chemicals themselves. Um, but it works out um, as far as signs are concerned, positives and negative joules, whatever, it works out the same way. So I wanted to just kind of you know, show you that it is represented. It, it gets a little bit confusing when, you know, the the chapter starts with talking about a delta E, and then it jumps to a delta Q, and then you'll see uh, delta H, and they're really talking all about um, essentially the same thing that they're all energies, uh, and the Q gives you a little more hint that they're talking about a cha change in heat, um, so temperatures are changing, whereas a delta H is more of a change, or you're changing one chemical into another chemical. Each of those chemicals uh, by itself, sort of the internal energy is different, so there's a change in energy when you go from one chemical to another, and that's represented generally by a delta H. Um, but when it's exothermic, again, because you're going from a higher energy to a low, you're going to have a negative result in joules. And endothermic, uh, you're going from a lower energy pro uh, reactants up to a higher energy of product. It's going to be a positive number in joule. So when we go back to that equation that uh, I showed before, that um, that the book will represent the change in energy of the system is minus the change in energy of the surroundings. If you look at these the signs, if you have a exothermic reaction, okay, your change in energy of your system is going to be a negative joules. And then on this side, your change in energy of your surrounding is going to be plus. So you end up with minus joules equal to minus joules. Um, and when you do your homework, you'll get a negative you know, number of joules. But it balances out. If you have an endothermic reaction, uh, what happens to the signs? So if you're endothermic, okay, your change in energy of the system here is going to be um, positive. So you have a positive joules here. And minus your change in energy of your surroundings, the surroundings are going to lose energy. They're going to be minus, and therefore you'll get a plus joules on the left and a minus times a minus or a plus joules on the right. And it'll be representative, uh, represented by a positive uh, value for joules and energy. Uh, so hopefully uh, this, you know, I try to make this as simple as I can because even for me, I get confused easily when I start talking about thermochemistry and reaction rates uh, and energy. Uh, the signs are very important. Is it plus or is it minus? And it tells you a lot and you need to keep those straight. And I go through this a lot of times if I've walked away from this for a while. I have to come back, sit down and think about it again and get uh, those signs straight in my head uh, before I tackle problems. So hopefully this will help you with uh, doing that. Thank you.